Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are starting to talk about pure bending and composite materials. And all composite materials are, is if you take a cross section of your member and you see there's more than one material in there, then this will be a composite material because each material will have a different modulus of elasticity. And, uh, and that's going to change the way that we solve these problems. So for example, the modulus of elasticity of steel uh, would be 200 gigapascals and the modulus of uh, elasticity of brass, so B, would be uh, 100 gigapascals. So if we were looking at a pure bending problem, uh, in the past we've been using this expression where we have stress is equal to negative my over the moment of inertia. Well, this expression here is based on the assumption that the cross section has a uniform modulus of elasticity. So when we have more than one, we can't use that. So that would be in the case of this uh, brass and steel or this brass and steel or even in reinforced concrete where we have rebar running down the length of the member and then we're seeing this, uh, this, this part of the cross section with the different modulus of elasticity. So what we need to do is we need to virtually transform one of these sections with uh, a different modulus of elasticity so that it, uh, we basically convert it to having the same modulus of elasticity as the other section which will virtually adjust the area of it and, uh, and then we can solve using our familiar expressions from the last videos and then we have to do one last adjustment if we're searching for stress because stress depends on area and we're kind of virtually tampering with the area. So the way that we do this is we take the ratio, we call it n, and, uh, and it's just the ratio of the two different moduluses of elasticity or the ones that we want to convert. So we take, let's take ES on top and EB on the bottom. Uh, so that would be 200 gigapascals over 100 gigapascals and that gives us a final number there of n equals 2. So what we do is we just multiply uh, we multiply the top one here the numerator by n and uh, basically we're going to increase the area uh, of that of the of the part with that modulus of elasticity so that steel part we're going to increase the area by a factor of n. So in this case, uh, if we were wanted to solve for this problem, we would increase this area of steel by 2. And if we were solving for this one, we would increase this area of steel by 2 as well. If we had written it like uh, n is equal to eb over es, then we're going to get uh, 100 over 200, and we're going to get this is equal to 0 0.5. Uh, and so then we'd actually be multiplying the brass area by 0 0.5 or reducing it, or in this case multiplying the brass, and then we'd be solving as if the modulus of elasticity of the whole thing was uh, equal to 200 gigapascals, where in this case we're solving as if we've converted everything to brass, so the modulus of elasticity is 100 gigapascals. So let's go and draw these over here. So what I did was when I increased the area of, uh, of the steel here by a factor of 2, uh, I actually increased the area in a, in a direction that's parallel to the neutral axis of the cross section because we don't actually want to tamper with where how far away the centroid is from the neutral axis. In this case, the centroid will be right on the neutral axis, and in this case, uh, it becomes a composite shape, but the, the centroid of this area is the same. It hasn't been adjusted for the distance from the neutral axis. In this case, the neutral axis will be uh, well, it doesn't really. Yeah, it'll be somewhere. It'll be somewhere like that. And in the original, uh, untra the untransformed, not virtual, real life situation, the neutral axis is in the same location. It doesn't actually change. Um, this is just a way for us to mathematically represent the fact that the steel here has got more oomph than the uh, than the brass, really. So we always increase the area in a direction that's parallel to the neutral axis. So we're not. We didn't make this two times taller. We didn't make this one two times taller. We made it two times wider. All right. Um, so now what we can do is we can just now that this basically once we increase the area, we're saying that this is an, this is equivalent to this section of steel now actually being brass. So we're saying here that the modulus of uh, we gotta write it like this that the modulus of elasticity is actually equal to. Um, is equal to brass, so we're going to say it's 100 gigapascals for all sections. We've transformed that steel, so now we have a uniform cross-section, uh, 
And again, here we have this is modulus of elasticity, and uh, this one already was modulus of elasticity of 100. Um, and now we can go ahead and use this expression here, or uh, if we're looking for the max, uh, the max stress, you know, at the the top or the bottom here, that was equal to uh, um, m c over i, just like that. Uh, but now that we're now that we're dealing with a single modulus of elasticity, we can use this expression and it, this now we're able to solve. Uh, if we have something like this, it becomes a composite shape, and we know how to solve composite shapes from the last couple of videos. And if it's just like this, it's pretty easy. Uh, the only thing that we need to watch out for now is that the stress in the transformed part, so that would be the middle part here, or the top part here, uh, will need to be multiplied. Once we solve for the stress uh, at any point, or the max stress in this section, uh, we'll need to multiply it by n to get the right answer because uh, because stress is really as force per area and we've virtually expanded the area by a factor of n which kind of artificially decreases the value that these expressions spit out by a factor of n so what we need to do is we need just need to multiply this by n to get it back to what is actually going on in real life because it is based on the real area not the transformed kind of virtual area so uh, and then if we're looking at the stresses in the untransformed section, so down in this area or in the sides here where we didn't tamper with their areas, uh, these expressions will spit out uh, the correct value so we don't need any further adjustment for those. Alright, so with all that said, that's just kind of an introduction to the topic. In the next couple of videos, we're going to go over solving uh, this, exact, uh, this exact problem and this exact problem, and then after we do those, then we'll go into talking about reinforced concrete because the process for reinforced concrete is uh, slightly different, and we'll get to that in a few videos from now.